In this video, I want to go over a utility called B1 Free Archiver. B1 Free Archiver allows you to compress and uncompress files on your system. And when I mean compressed files, if you're coming from the Windows or Mac environment, you're probably familiar with zip files.zip extension .rar or other formats where multiple files are compressed into one file, allowing you to uncompress them so you can send across the internet or place online and download just one file and uncompress them on your computer. Now if you found this video on YouTube, I will provide a link below the video where you can look at information on my webpage where you can get more information about this piece of software, the B1 Free Archiver, and how to install it. Now B1 Archiver is not just for Linux. It works on Windows, Linux, Mac, Android, and even has online feature where you can upload your compressed file to unzip it from the internet. Here's what it looks like, and I've turned off my dark background, my background theme, uh, because with the Free Archiver, it doesn't play well with dark themes, which that's okay. I mean, there's wit tricks around it, but that's not what this video is about. Now, if you look, here's a more better description from Wikipedia about the Free Archiver, but I'll show you in just a moment. It does support multiple formats, you know, since it's called B1 Free Archiver, of course it's going to support the B1 extension, the ZIP extension, JAR, XPI, RAR, 7Z, ARJ, and many, many more. So it's a very, very, uh, it supports lots of formats. And like I said, since it's for Windows and Mac, if you're ever thinking about switching over to Linux, you might want to install this on your system. So when you do install it, and you ever decide to switch to Linux, you can put this on there, and you'll be in that comfort zone. Now, the default, the Ingrampa Archive Manager within Windows works great. You do have to install some additional plugins so that you can extract the RAR. Here is the way that you can install it. You can go to the Snapcraft website, but you have to have your Linux system set up to install the Snapcraft. So you can click install, and if you don't have it set up to install snaps, you can choose what version of Linux. In this case, I say Ubuntu since I'm using Ubuntu Mate. And you can install here, but before you do, you can set your system up by going sudo app update, sudo app install the snap, and then you can just copy that and put that into your terminal to install it from the snap rather than clicking on the button here. But I'll close this down. That's one way. The other way is going to the developer's website, and it will kind of scan your system uh, when it loads and it determined that I'm running a Linux system. If you're clicking to this website and you're wanting Windows, it'll probably say free download for Windows. And if you're on a Mac, it'll probably say free download for Mac. And if you're on Android, it'll probably say free download from Android. And it'll give you the appearance of your system of what some of the images look like. There's a lot more features here. And the thing I like about it, it has a great help. When you click on help, it, you can see questions of common questions or you can say even read more help information and look at how to do things with uh, this particular program and now the thing I like about it is it has illustrated instructions from the website now here's how you can install it there's two methods by the snapcraft if you got your system set up with snap you just simply open the terminal copy put that in your terminal press the enter return put in your password and then put the sudo snap remove to take it off your system if you don't like it. Uh, so I do have ways of installing it and ways of uninstalling it using the snap. Another method is like I said clicking the link downloading the file and since I chose my Ubuntu it will download the deb package installer. So when I double click the file that I installed when I go in my download folder I must have gdeb installed on there which my Ubuntu does. I just click the install package put in my password, wait till it says same version is installed, and then it will place it on my system. It will install it on my system. By default, on my menu, it will go into my accessories, the B1 Archiver, or you can right click uh, compressed, like this case is a .zip extension, and bring it up. Now I haven't changed it to my default. As you can see, the Ingrampa Archive Manager is still the default, but you can right click it and it should show up in your menu here. If not, click on other applications and click on that so that it will add it to your list. And when you do that, it will open up into your B1 Free Archiver. Here's what it looks like and here's your menus, but instead of showing you all the images, I will actually show you 
from the program itself. So let me minimize this. I'm going to go open up Applications, Accessories, click on the B1 Free Archiver. Now the last folder I work with is the Downloads folder. You can go into File, Settings, and you can tweak the settings to the way that you like to use the program. It says B1 works perfectly by the default setting, so you don't need to change anything unless you want to. And this right here gives you a little descriptions of what the other tabs are. If you want to choose a different language, you click on which language that your your native language is or the current language that you speak and read. You can choose your default actions. You know, this is what it does the way you behave. Like when you click on an archive file, you can choose to ask you what to do. I chose the default which is to open it in the B1 archiver but I haven't really made this my default or you can say just extract and don't do anything else or do not ask for anything so when you click on it it will immediately extract it or you can choose to ask for a folder and once you choose that to apply this to make it your default you can say apply and close now I'm not going to do that because I right now I don't want to make this my default program for file associations as you can see by default it has the B1 since it's in B1 free archiver B1 is one of the uh, extensions the ARJ A and AR the LZH and LHA those are the default that it will open up if you want to make others I don't recommend the DEB because the GDEB is that by default that allows you to install it but if you wanted to choose like the TAR the RAR as you can see it supports the AR and the ZIP you can choose those as well hit apply and it will make this the default for opening up those extensions here's the miscellaneous that shows you other tweaks you can do and then expert settings that you can save for experienced users so I won't get into that in this video now let me close it out as you can see here here's the files that you would see if I were to open up my file manager and go to my downloads folder these are the files that you would see there now as you can see there is a honeycut meal pics these are pictures that I have in my pics folder that I did zip up or compress into the B1 format there's two ways that I could see those I could click on to the uh, honeycut uh, pictures which is here and I could double click and as you can see there's the images and they should have a little preview out to the right hand side or I could just double click the file that's in that folder now if I wanted to extract these images uh, here I could just say extract and it will come up and place them in a downloads folder and it will create a folder called Honeycut Meal Picks and if I just want to place them in my downloads folder I could choose the top option which is downloads or I could create a new folder go to the existing folder or always extract to this folder which is select here so I'm going to let it place them into that folder I hit OK and it's when it's finished it'll say extracting is complete if I don't want to see this dialog box anymore I could check this close the window when finished and when it's completed it will just go away it will not show this dialog box here when I close the program as you can now see I do have an extra folder called Honeycut Meal Picks and here are the three images that are in that folder so they were zipped up with the B1 extension so as you can see and I'll delete that folder that was just for an example that's the dot B1 extension now I didn't show you this while ago but I told you you can double click with it since it's a, the default with the B1 extension it did open up into this particular program the B1 free archiver it also works with zip extensions and even RAR so I do have some fonts zipped up or compressed in the RAR format. I can right click. I don't want to double click because it's still set with the default, the Engrampa Archive Manager. But I can right click, open with my B1 Free Archiver. As you can see here, these are fonts that I have compressed in the RAR format. I can just simply hit Extract. I can say Extract into the fonts Headmaster, hit OK and when it's completed now I can ch choose this and that way when the next time I unzip something you won't see this I hit close and I close this out as you can see the fonts headmaster these are the fonts that were zipped up in that RAR and I don't want to go and open each one of those I'll delete that so that was the RAR now here's the zip file or actually I've got another zip file which is my modems my Wi-Fi driver my dongle so I can right click say open with my B1 free archiver now here is a folder within a folder so instead of saying extract and choosing this folder it's going to create that folder name but then it's going to have that folder in it so instead of having a folder within the folder of the same name I can come up to my downloads hit OK 
This time it didn't tell me when it's finished because I chose to not show that box anymore. So I close this out and instead of having the folder within the folder I just chose to put it in the downloads and there's the existing folder. If I chose the folder within the folder when I click that that folder would be appear again and I would have to double click it to see the files in that folder. So it did extract the ZIP very quickly so it's very quick to extract files within that particular uh, program. Now a way that you can compress files or make an archive file you can choose files let's say for example these deb files I want to take the, this file this file and this file and compress them up in a test file folder or zip file compression I've selected the three files I just simply clicked on one held the shift key down and pressed the down arrow until I select the three I can now choose to create and I've got the options right in here and you can go and tweak it even more to make it a B1 or a zip. Now when you're with a B1 you can choose to split the archive and if it's a very large file you can make them to the size of a DVD, to the size of a CD, or even smaller you could set the size of your choice. But in this case I want to make it a zip file so it doesn't give you the option of splitting the file. In this I'm just going to call it test since this is a test zip file and I do want to show you that you can set them to a password so if I put the word password and I put where you can see it exposing the password if you don't want to show it you can say uncheck that and it'll just put dots I can set the start and when it's finished this one's a different dialog box this is where you created it instead of uncompressing it so if you don't want to see that anymore you could say close this window when finished check that and you will not see this dialog box anymore so when I close this out you should now see a test.zip file. Now, if I try to extract this, if I go and say extract here, it will not extract the contents of that file until I put the password. And if I put a random password, like just random letters, and I put it OK, it won't let me. It tells me my password is wrong. So in order to extract it, I have to put the correct password, which was password, and then hit OK and then it created a folder called test and it placed those three deb files that I compressed in it so this is just a simple archiver that allows you to compress your files so that you can send them across the internet as one file instead of multiple files and it allows you to uncompress files with multiple extensions so if you're looking for a graphical user interface and you're on Windows, Linux, Mac, or Android, B1 Free Archiver gives you a choice to use it on multiple platforms, not just one particular platform. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you, and have a great day.